What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. What's up everybody? My name is Eric. Welcome to my channel, Eric the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about a lot of important reactions with alcohols, okay? So we're going to start with the synthesis of alcohols and we're just going to jump right in, all right? We're going to have quite a few examples today. All right, so let's go ahead and put an example on the board. Okay, so I have something that looks like this, and I react it with NaOH. We know from previous videos that we can undergo an SN2 reaction. This is going to undergo an SN2 reaction, and our major product is going to look like this. And this is something known as a primary alcohol. Okay, so quick easy one reaction down let's go ahead and do more reactions so let's say we didn't have a primary um, a primary carbon here right and we can't undergo SN2 what if we had what if we had an, instead a secondary BR right here and I reacted this with water well then we know that we have a poor nucleophile we can undergo SN1 this is an SN1 reaction where BR is going to leave. BR is going to leave. We get a carbocation. And then our water is going to join in. Here's our water. Here's our OH2 group. And then our BR minus can come grab my hydrogen and kick on a lone pair onto that oxygen. Okay? Giving us a something known as a secondary alcohol. Okay? Draw another example on the board here, okay? I'm gonna scroll up. Okay. So we had something that looked like this. We have a primary, and I react this with the following. In DMF, what do you think the importance is of the DMF? Well, the DMF is a polar aprotic solvent. This is polar aprotic. That's going to help this nucleophile right here. It's going to help this nucleophile. It's going to help it do SN2. Okay, because we have a primary, we're just trying to have the best conditions possible to give us SN2. All right, so let's see what we get. So this oxygen is going to come bond with this carbon and kick this BR group out. So now coming off of coming off of this carbon right here, which was this carbon over here. So we're looking at this carbon. We're now going to have an oxygen with a carbonyl group and the rest of the R group. This group is something known as an ester. Okay, so this isn't the this isn't the alcohol that we want, but it gave us an ester. So what I can do is I can take this ester and I can undergo hydrolysis. So let's say I react this with H2O. This is hydrolysis. Well, if I do that, then I won't go through all the steps, but this ester group is going to turn into an OH. So, and we would do this hydrolysis in H plus conditions. That's going to give us another alcohol, okay? So that's just another way of making an alcohol. Let's go ahead and continue our discussion of synthesizing alcohols, but I want to use something different. I want to introduce oxidation and reduction reactions, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some oxidation and reduction. All right, so if I wanna oxidize something or if I wanna reduce something, let's say we started out with, let's say we started out with a ketone group. Here's our ketone group, okay? And I want to synthesize a secondary alcohol. How am I going to do that? Well, we can use a cool reagent such as 
NaBH4, or we could use a reagent called, so I'll say, or we could use LiAlH4. All right, and the basic mechanism here is to take my R, C double bond O, R group, use my bro, my, my B group here, my boron. It's gonna have four bonds. It normally wants to have three bonds. So we're negatively charged boron here. We can take one of these hydrogens and put it right here, okay? So when that happens, let's say this is step one. When that happens, we get R, O minus, R, and a new hydrogen in here. If I do step two, H3O plus, I can take one of these oxygens, grab a hydrogen from my H3O plus, and that's gonna give us R, O, H. Just like that, and that gave us our secondary alcohol. Okay, we also get some water. Okay, so we could have used NaBH4 or we could have done LiAlH4, all right? Typically when we do this, we're going to want to be in a we're going to want to be in a aprotic solvent, so we usually put this in diethyl ether. All right? So, let's go ahead and do a practice problem now. So, I'm going to go ahead and push this guy up here. Okay, and let's do a practice problem. Let's say we had this group, and I react this with LiAlH4 in diethyl ether, and I do acid workup after. What's my final product going to be? Pause the video and give it a try. All right, well, I know that one of the hydrogens from my ALH4 negatively charged aluminum with my positively charged lithium. I'm going to take one of these hydrogens and I'm going to push it right on to that carbon there. So that's going to give me O minus with a new hydrogen. I'm going to do H3O plus, grab a hydrogen, push it onto the oxygen. And that's going to give me a final product of a newly synthesized alcohol. Okay. Now, what if I took a, another example? So let's do another example. Let's say I took my, let's take an aldehyde group here. And I want to react this with. NaBH4 in ethoxide. What do you think is going to happen here? Well, we know one of the hydrogens. So here's my BH4. We know one of the hydrogens is going to come in here, push this guy up here. Remember, this is an aldehyde. Well, then our product is going to look something like Gonna have a O minus two new hydrogens here, and this negatively charged group is going to grab a hydrogen floating around in solution from my my alcohol group here. Okay, my ethanol. All right. So when that happens, that's going to give us a final product of here is our primary alcohol. All right, and this was our final product. Again, we synthesized an alcohol. I'll go ahead and make more videos on reactions with alcohols in the following videos. Thanks, guys. See you next time.